gradation gradation can be defined as the leveling of the earth's surface through natural processes which cause it to increase or decrease weathering running water moving ice winds groundwater and sea waves are the various agents of gradation they tend to level the land surface to a common grade by increasing or decreasing it degradation and aggradation there are two processes that are involved in the geographical phenomenon of degradation these are called aggradation and degradation aggradation is the process that involves the formation of various land surfaces through deposition and accumulation of rock fragments sand alluvium etc degradation on the other hand is the process which involves the lowering of the earth's surface by disintegration and carrying away of rock fragments these two processes usually take place simultaneously causing lowering down of the land at certain places and building up of landforms at others as a result the fine balance in the surface of the earth continues to remain unaffected by them the major agents of gradation that impact the surface of the earth are discussed below weathering weathering can be defined as the gradual process by which rocks break up and decay due to the atmospheric conditions in situ in place that is there is no transportation of rock fragments through the agents of gradation it may be caused by chemical physical and biological processes weathering alters the landscape and is crucial to the formation of soil mechanical or physical weathering occurs due to temperature changes and the action of frost rocks expand due to high temperatures during the day and contract at night when the temperature is cool this alternate expansion and contraction causes the rocks to crack and disintegrate in cold areas when water enters the cracks it freezes at night this widens the cracks and generally breaks up the rock diluted acids in rainwater and the soluble action of water causes decay and break up of rocks leading to chemical weathering biological weathering results from roots of plants expanding within existing cracks or deepening into the rocks and burrowing animals that breaks up rocks certain human activities also cause weathering erosion the process of wearing away of the land surface and its transportation by natural agents like running water moving ice wind action of waves etc is known as erosion deposition the dumping of rock debris obtained by weathering and erosion in other parts of the earth is known as deposition the debris after deposition may accumulate to form new rocks riverine landforms water is one of the strongest agents of erosion with rainfall being the main source of water however a portion of this water seeps underground in the form of groundwater while another portion stays on the surface of the earth as surface water underground caves are formed by the action of groundwater whereas flowing surface water mainly in the form of rivers alters landforms on the surface of the earth the action of running water is clearly noticeable if we follow a river along its course from its source to the sea the source or origin of a river is in the hilly or mountainous regions known as the upper course wherein it flows along a path from the mountains to the low lying plains finally joining the sea or ocean which is known as the mouth of a river during its journey a river performs the task of erosion deposition transportation as well as formation of several landforms contingent on the volume of water slope of land materials carried by it its valleys and canyons in its upper course the river causes erosion of the valley bed more than the sides 
This leads to the formation of a valley which is deep and narrow with steep sides and hard rocks referred to as gorges or eye-shaped valleys and canyons in the drier areas. For instance, the Grand Canyon in Arizona and the Kali Gandaki Gorge in Nepal. A waterfall is formed when a river falls from a great height over hard rocks or down a steep valley. Sometimes it encounters extremely hard rocks in the river bed and at times the softer rocks get eroded easily and the river jumps over the bands of hard rocks forming rapids. The Angel Falls in Venezuela at a height of 979 meter is the highest waterfall in the world while the Jog or Gersopa waterfall on river Sharavati in Karnataka at 253 meter is the highest waterfall in India. Due to the great force of falling water, waterfalls are often used for generating hydroelectricity. As a river leaves the higher land and enters its middle course, its speed decreases. So, besides eroding the sides of its valley and transporting the eroded material, it also deposits some of its load-forming V-shaped valleys with less steep sides. In its middle course, the river reaches the plains where the valley gets widened. Hence, the slope in the plains is not as steep as the mountains. The speed of the river also decreases and movement on an uneven land surface forces the water to move irregularly, leading to the creation of loops or meanders. During the middle course, the river performs the work of erosion, transportation as well as deposition. At times, meanders acquire a distinctly circular shape, while the river's outer banks get eroded more, forming river cliffs. Deposition occurs on the inner bank. During the lower course, the river flows through land which is almost flat. Its work is mainly deposition, as its flow is now extremely sluggish. The river valley is therefore very open. At times, the river may cut a shorter course through a strip of land between two loops so as to flow into a straight path again. The circular loop left behind cuts off from the main river to form an oxbow lake. During the rainy season, the river often overflows and deposits the sediments beyond the banks. The sediments comprise sand, gravel and silt. The deposition of these fertile sediments on the flat land thus leads to the formation of a flood plain. It is common in the middle and lower course of a river. The coarse materials deposited close to the river form a long and low wall along a bank known as a natural lava. In its lower course, when the river nears the sea, its remaining load gets deposited forming a fan-shaped tract of alluvial land at its mouth. There is also a decrease in the slope of the land, thus slowing the speed of the river. This triangular feature of deposition and distributaries is known as a delta, from the Greek word delta that resembles a triangle. The delta region is extremely fertile and supports the settlement of a huge population. The water of the rivers then flows over the area, forming numerous small streams known as distributaries. The Ganga Brahmaputra River system forms the world's largest delta. The Nile, Amazon and Mississippi rivers are also noted for the formation of delta. Glacier landforms Precipitation in higher altitudes usually takes the form of ice which modifies the landscape slowly over a long period of time. Snow fields are formed when snow accumulates on vast areas of land above the snow line. A snow line is an altitude above which the ground remains permanently covered in snow. When the snow creeps down, the slope of mountains, due to the action of gravity, it forms a river of ice known as a glacier. As a glacier moves, it carries rock fragments as well as gravel with it.
A glacier erodes both the bed and the sides of its valley at the same time, thus forming a U-shaped valley with a flat base and very steep sides. In the mountains, a glacier carves deep hollows forming armchair-shaped depressions known as Cody in Scotland or Sarki in France or Swims. Many such features are found in the Scottish and Welsh highlands. Thereafter, when the ice melts, the basin or hollow is filled with water forming a lake known as a Cody Lake or Tarn. When two or more glaciers form Cody's on either side of the same mountain, they ultimately form a pointed peak called a pyramidal peak, for instance, Mount Matterhorn in Switzerland. A glacier often acts like a plough or a gigantic piece of sandpaper because it erodes the land beneath it. The sand, gravel, clay and boulders that it erodes are thereafter carried by the glacier either on its surface within it or dragged along at the bottom. As temperatures increase and the ice melts, the glacier leaves behind or deposits the load it is carrying on the valley sides and floor. These are known as moraines. When they are large fragments, they are known as till or boulder clay deposits. Drumlins, eskers, kames and outwash sands are other depositional features of glaciers. Such glacial deposits are typical of the Canadian Shield area in North America. Sometimes, a glacier may reach the sea without melting. Here, it may break up and form floating masses of ice called icebergs. Many such icebergs are seen off the Scandinavian coast and in the Arctic Ocean. If the U-shaped valleys of glaciers extend down to the sea level, they may be occupied by the sea, forming jords, as along the Norwegian coast. Marine Landforms Along the coast, the main agents of gradation responsible for creating and changing landforms are sea waves, currents and tides. Waves, the most powerful agents of marine action, originate due to the sweeping of winds over the surface of water and gradually become higher and swifter as they move towards the shore. The work of the wave is, however, confined to a narrow belt along the coast. As the waves come in and break on the shore, they erode the land and carry the material away. Where the rocks on the coast are soft, marine erosion pushes back the shoreline and carves out sea cliffs and wave-cut terraces or platforms. So, a cliff is defined as a steep vertical rock facing the sea, for instance, the White Cliffs of Dover, England. On the coasts, with alternate bands of hard and soft rocks, the softer ones are eroded by waves to form a bay, which is an area of water surrounded by land, and the harder rocks remain as headlands or capes. Example, the Cape of Good Hope in Africa. Capes are formed when the headlands are eroded back and over a period of time these are further eroded to form arches which eventually collapse and form island stacks and stumps. The waves may also deposit the sand and the eroded material they carry along the shore causing the formation of beaches. Example, the Marina Beach in Mumbai. Sometimes, sand and pebbles get deposited to form a low-lying ridge called a spit, whose one end is usually attached to the mainland. When a spit grows in length across the coast, it may form a sandbar. Often sandbars cut off a part of the sea to form lagoons or backwaters. The Kerala backwaters in India are a chain of brackish or saltwater lagoons and lakes lying parallel to the Arabian Sea coast of Kerala. Wind Landforms The role of winds in altering the landscape is particularly noticeable in deserts where the soil is sandy, dry and loose and where aridity or dryness is the main feature. The availability of vegetation and moisture is also extremely low due to lack of rainfall. 
As the winds freely blow in the sandy areas, they carry loose sand particles which act as tools in the scrapping and polishing rocks to form different features. Many oases are formed in this way when groundwater comes to the surface. Wind also lifts sand particles and deposits them in far off areas. When the wind comes in contact with harder rocks, the sand blasting effect of the wind carves the rocks into peculiar looking pillars called rock pedestals. At times, erosion of these rocks is maximum at the base as the wind cannot carry the sand to a greater height leading to the formation of mushroom rocks or gore. Numerous examples of these are visible in the Sahara Desert of Africa. When the speed of the wind decreases, it deposits the sand and particles it was carrying along with it. As more and more sand gets deposited here, a hill of sand known as a sand dune is formed, shaped by the movement of the winds. According to their shape, some sand dunes may be crescent-shaped bar chans, while others may be longitudinal sieves. These sand dunes are not static. Instead, they move in the direction of the wind. Such dunes can be found in both the Indian and the Sahara deserts. However, migrating sand dunes pose a threat to human settlements, forests and farmlands. Sometimes the fine sand can be carried to great distances and deposited over large areas forming Lewis deposits, which are deposits of silt usually yellow in color and very fertile. These may bury all landforms in an area. The most extensive deposit of Lewis is found in the Lewis Plateau of Huang Ho River Basin in China.